Dragon Ball Z Collection 1 Movie Pack. This one contains Dead Zone, The World's Strongest, Tree of Might, Lord Slug, and Cooler's Revenge. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, this one just has Goku and his Falk Super Saiyan form on the cover. Some may call it his faux Super Saiyan form, his fake Super Saiyan form, or his semi-Super Saiyan form. Basically, before they got the color and right from the manga to the anime of a Super Saiyan that was originally white in the manga, but they made it yellow in the anime. And this movie came out around the same time that he went Super Saiyan in the anime, so we got this. Which is, I think is an awesome in-between for him. And here we got Lord Slug, the evil Namekian, which was great at the time because the Namek Saga was Aaron under the Siege of Frieza. And we just saw the Namekians as this helpless um, people, right? But it was cool to have the evil one come out at the same time. He got all his henchmen right here. Pretty one note henchmen, just one shot above those Z fighters to give them shine. On the back here, you just got your typical description. You got your pictures of Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo on the back. Starting off with Dead Zone, we got the Goat Garlic Jr. Goku on the Nimbus, which he rode that more. Gohan with the Dragon Ball on his hat. That didn't last too long, did it? On, on the inside, we got Dead Zone and the World's Strongest. So glad they're on separate this. Now as for um, Dead Zone, I really like this movie. Personally, I watched it right before I started Z and right after Dragon Ball. Some say it can't take place because Krillin, quote unquote, doesn't remember Gohan after this movie. But when they freak out, it's up for interpretation in my eyes. Because I take it, if this movie is to take place before the Raditz saga, I take it as um, he, Krillin, told Bulma and Roshi about Gohan going rage mode against Garlic Jr. When they're like, go. Goku's son, if you're watching it from that perspective, you can take it as, oh, they know about his, his ability to go rage, just like Goku, and when they see his tail especially, they're scared of that, so that's just my interpretation. As for World's Strongest, this is one of the hardest movies to fit, because um, all the Z Fighters are still alive in this movie, but Gohan is remembering Piccolo's death. But Goku knows the Spirit Bomb and Kaioken techniques. So this is a bit of a stretch to fit this movie. But um, I could say it could happen in um, three years waiting for the androids. Some people are like, well, why doesn't Goku go Super Saiyan? And at that point, when he's training with Gohan and Piccolo for the um, androids, he doesn't really go Super Saiyan at all when he's training. So in my personal head can, this doesn't have to be yours is that they're not training whereas when they when they was waiting for the cell games he stayed in super saiyan form to make that the normal and this training in my mind is he was trying to stay in base as long as possible to sharpen his base mode as long as possible so when he did go super saiyan he'd be more powerful so my head cannon for the world's strongest is he has super saiyan but he's holding back and let's be honest dr wheelow and dr hotch on here aren't really that much of a threat that he would need it in the first place. And on the back, his characters um, from the world's strongest. You got Dr. Wheelow here, his henchman. You got Gohan a little bit stronger, and Goku still in the Nimbus. I really like this art because it gives you covers from both of the movies. It's not just a generic cover in one of them. Now here we got the Tree of Might, one of my favorite um, movies with Turles that Goku look alike, his henchman, Goku Piccolo Gohan once again. As for Tree of Might, I would say the same as the World's Strongest, because in these um, those trilogy of movies where you can't fit anywhere, it all has the Icarus arc in it. And so it has a straight art, but at the same time you can't fit them with the main timeline. So 
I'd say the same as when you bat on Turles. He has Super Saiyan, but he doesn't quite need it yet. Even with Turles using the fruit from the Tree of Might, Goku is still trying to hold back and make his base form stronger for the androids in my mind. And here we got Slug, the goat right here. I really like this movie because um, it really brings Piccolo's um, abilities from OG Dragon Ball back in the fold. And they really toy with the whole mech and sharp hearing thing where he has to poke out his own ears in order to um, help them fight Slug. So I really like this movie. And on the back is the same color as the main box. Nothing special. Here we got Cooler's Revenge. Frieza's brother Cooler getting his revenge on Goku. This really ties into Frieza's side and I really enjoyed it. And we got full Super Saiyan Goku, Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin right there. And this one just has Cooler's Revenge in it, I believe. Yep. As for this movie, I really like this movie. This is one of the easiest movies to fit. And basically, you just watch it before the androids show up. They're, they're taking a break from training, going camping, and Cooler shows up to whip some ass. So overall, I really like the Dragon Ball Z movies. And most people say, oh, they can't fit. Like, some of them can't, no matter how hard you try. But I really try to fit these in my watch throughs and I watch them that same way every time. And I think I have one more movie box of um, Dragon Ball Z movies to go through. So that's basically all I have to say about the Dragon Ball Z movie collection one. And Gene the Bulk, signing out.